One of the other points you've made is that, uh, and I'm going to probably mangle this quote, but I think what you're saying is that we should design things for the way uh, people actually behave, not the way we would like them to behave. Did I get that close? There's a real problem in the engineering world. Okay. That is, the engineers who designed these cars, and for a long time, it was engineers who did everything. And they would decide what they thought people ought to have in the car and the way it used to work. The problem is that they were too logical. And that's, they were designing that's a, things. Yeah, that's the curse of an engineer. Logic, the curse of an engineer. And I keep trying to explain you have to design it for people the way they are, not the way you'd prefer them to be. Are we better at that these days than we used to be? Because we're taking it away from the engineers. Mm. The engineers are absolutely essential and important in driving these things to make sure they're functional and work well and do all that we care about. But we need people with a psychology background. It's interesting that when the first computers were available for home use, they were unworkable. These were designed by engineers, by programmers, by computer scientists who didn't understand everyday people. Right. So yeah. there was a whole field that evolved called human-computer interaction, which is a sub-branch of human factors. Well, today, these people are now working in human-automobile interaction and yeah. in all sorts of fields, and they're very important. So the human factors groups in all of the major automobile manufacturers are actually having more say and more control over the design of the stuff that the passengers and the drivers interact with. Oh, that's a with. good thing, it sounds that's like. That's a really good thing.